Bill Napier, you know, Louisiana a little bit. Are you familiar with him? And just what are your thoughts on that Florida Gator offense? Uh, you can see some similarities from when he was at UL Lafayette. Um, played him in the bowl game. He was going already, of course, when I was at Marshall. But you can see a lot of similarities in the offenses. And uh, he's got better players, of course, in Florida. So uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. I guess we were talking to um, Tamara and Shannon about like the new communication systems. So who's going to be wearing the in-ear uh, or in-helmet headset on defense? Uh, we've had linebackers in it. Uh, I think, the, you know, if we're a safety-driven defense, but you have to get the calls to the defensive lineman. You can't give the call to just the secondary guy and he'd be able to relate it. So it'll go through backers, and, uh, and that's kind of the way we'll do it. And we'll still have communications other ways. And how much have you guys worked on that just through fall camp? Oh, we, every day, you know, so getting used to getting the call. I think it does help with tempo offenses, being able to line up your front. They don't have to cut their eyes to the sideline. Uh, so we, uh, I like it, you know, hopefully they don't go out. Everybody says it's 10 to go out in games. Lance, people tend to focus on offense when they talk about having pieces to work with. Um, but you've got a lot more pieces to work with this year on defense than you had a year ago. Talk a little bit about how that changes your approach? Will it change the way you call games? Yeah. Well, the first thing you notice is that we, we have some depth at defensive linemen. We have some guys that are combo guys, guys that can play inside, can play outside. So we feel like we have our best four on the field at all times. Uh, last year, we ran into some depth problems, of course, and we had to jump into some 3-3 stack stuff. We were not going to have to do that this year. I think we haven't got enough guys up front. And, feel good about our linebackers as well. So I think we have depth at those two spots in the secondary, a little bit thinner than the rest of the uh, defense, but I definitely think the strength is up front for us. Talking about the... Uh, I was just gonna say, so does that change you as a coordinator? Uh, you look at offenses and you look at what they do, and then you look at what you have in your package and you try to create one-on-ones maybe with your defensive lineman if that's your strength. So, uh, you know, I've always been a four down guy. So uh, we've got more combo guys here than I've had in other places. So uh, I think we'll be able to do more things. But it's all about what you see when you turn on the film and about the matchups of what you need to do. How much secondary help do you need to stop the run or can your front four, you know, apply pressure and stop run gap stuff, so. Number three on their wide receiver, uh, Eugene Wilson, uh, very electric player in his freshman years. What have you guys seen from him on, on film? What, how do you stop a player with that kind of, that kind of ability? Well, they put him in a lot of different spots, of course. He's a wide receiver that doesn't motion. He's a wide receiver that does motion. He goes into the backfield some. So I think uh, depending on what their situation is at running back, I'm expected to see him maybe line up in the backfield with some plays, and that changes things, you know. So will they do it with wide receivers, all wide receivers and a tight end, or will they do it with the running back in the game with him back there as well? So that's a whole different, you know, personnel grouping. So. Uh, we're working on some of those plays, of course, and try to give as many looks. But game one, you don't really know what you're going to get. You got a whole season that you looked at. Sometimes you look at it too much, and on game one, you don't see anything that you saw. But there will be some things that come up from the past, but I'm sure they have some new wrinkles going into the first game. With Kiko coming back, having him in the middle of your defense for a second, you're just the value that he brings – just how important is he going to be in defense? Yeah, I think he's uh, he'll be calm in the storm. I think he'll play extremely fast. Uh, he's played a lot of football, uh, communicates well, knows the defense uh, backward and forward. He can play the wheel back or the mic. So he's definitely a, you know, a good one to have in your defense with experience and being a playmaker that he is. A uh, younger defensive back that's been making some moves in camp, OJ Federer, what has he done so far that's allowed you guys to, you know, be confident in him and just what stands out about him so early on? Uh, probably his competitive nature, you know. I remember one of the first days that he was here in fall camp, he went up against an older wide receiver and he covered him and he didn't back down. And from there, your eyes kind of started opening. Uh, just the ability to play the ball down the field and not panic, looking back for the ball and not, you know, playing scared, so say. So he's got a... He's got a knack to him. He's big, he's more physical than you think. So as a freshman to come in and not blink like that is really, you know, it's not common. So we're really excited about him. I think he's got a great future here at Miami. What can you say about Graham Birds and the challenge of facing an experienced quarterback? Yeah, he processes things really well. You know, what he sees on film, uh, he's going to know what to do. You have to disguise a little bit maybe against him. He's going to know where to go with the football. Uh, he'll take the check down. He won't always throw it downfield, so he's smart. Um, and then he can run. 
You know, he can buy time. And when he gets out on the perimeter, he'll try to get you off your feet by pumping the ball and things like that. So he's a gamer. Uh, played guys like him last year, I think, similar. Guy from Texas A&M, guy from Georgia Tech was like that. You know, we faced some good quarterbacks last year, but he's definitely in that same world as them. And uh, you can tell the offense goes through him. He's experienced, and Coach Napier uh, feels good about him, you can tell. Having a guy like Akeem Messador back in the fold, healthy, you know, plays inside, plays outside, how, how awesome is that for you? Good, because, you know, he's a twitchy, twitchy guy that can play inside. He can also come off the edge. So he'll be used in a lot of different ways. And uh, I'm excited that he's healthy. You know, two years now, he hasn't been able to play. This is, you know, the third year here. And I think he'll, uh, I think he'll have a good season this year. One of the things with, uh, with Jaden Harris, I remember I spoke to Ken Kitchen back in last year, and he said that once his confidence gets up, he's going to be really good. How have you seen his confidence uh, maybe change or grow in the spring and fall? Getting better and better. He's uh, He can make a lot of checks back there, whereas last year he couldn't. He knows the defense a lot better now. He's playing faster. He's one of the faster safeties we had, one of the faster DBs. So uh, I think when he prepares for somebody, he's getting all the reps this year. Uh, whereas last year he was just kind of spotty at practice, so he really wasn't ready for the games. But I'm expecting him to have a good year, and he needs to get off to a fast start. Anything else for Coach Gidry? Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, guys.